Thank you, uh, Mr. Assistant President. This is indeed a matter of public importance, and I rise to speak about the utter confusion caused by the woke leftists and their, and their political partners, the Greens, in matters as vital as Aboriginal land representation and the protection of cultural heritage. What we've seen with the McPhillidys gold mine decision is yet another example of how their meddling, their Chardonnay socialism and their ideological posturing are doing more harm than good, not only to traditional owners, but for the future of New South Wales. The case of McPhillidys mine exposes a serious issue. Who is actually speaking for, for Aboriginal land? For years we've seen woke activists, usually disconnected from the communities they claim to support, pushing for more bureaucracy and red tape, all the while confusing the real issues at hand and doing that on purpose. These are the same people who shout loudest about environmental protection and cultural sensitivity, but end up entangling us in a web of contradictions that serves no one except themselves and their self-righteous image and agenda. The incompetence of federal social warrior Tanya Plibersek has been fully exposed, pitifully pitting Aboriginal group against Aboriginal group and family against family in this case. The Wiradjuri traditional owners of the Central West Aboriginal Corporation raised concerns about this mine project, believing they had the support of the Orange Local Aboriginal mm -hmm. Land Council. They were blindsided when the council reversed its position, moving from opposition to neutrality. This has left us all wondering who really has the connection and the voice and the right to speak for the land. This is where the confusion stems from. On one hand, we have the woke left and their green neo-Marxist acolytes pretending to be the champions of Aboriginal rights when all they are doing is overriding the rights of those who truly connect to the land. When all the Greens really want to do is destroy capitalism, as admitted by one of their honourable members in this place yesterday. We are seeing these same groups supporting policies that weaken genuine consultation and empower the very bureaucracies that sideline the voices of real traditional owners. It's nothing more than hypocrisy. In taking this approach, we see what their real objectives are. Let's be clear. The Greens and the so-called protectors of culture and the environment are the biggest hypocrites in this debate. They love to preach from their ivory towers, sipping their Chardonnay and virtue signalling about protecting the earth and Aboriginal heritage, when it comes down to the practical real-world issues, they are the first to abandon those they claim to defend. The Greens have an obsession with centralising power in bureaucratic structures, whether in land councils or through government overreach, and in taking this approach, we see what their real objectives, objectives are. Their objectives aren't about social justice or the environment, given they are nothing more but social engineers working towards Lee Rhiannon's communist utopia that was created in Russia in 1918 and failed when the hammer and sickle flag was finally lowered for the last time in Russia on <coughs> December 25th, 1991. What a great Christmas present to, to the people of the world that was. The Greens have learned absolutely nothing from the failed communist experiment they are trying by guile to inflict on Australia. And make no mistake, the confusion the Greens and their leftist allies bring to any debate is by design. Their political chicanery thrives on chaos, on muddying the waters of governance so that they can push their agenda. Their dream, and let's be honest, is to drag New South Wales into a socialist quagmire, akin to the failed state of Cuba, where bureaucrats and apparatchiks hold all the power, the voices of the real people, people who work the land, who live in these communities, are drowned out. The Greens are obviously thrilled mm. with the broken system that caused the confusion and conflict mm. between Aboriginal councils in the Central West and Orange regions and traditional owners in the Blaney area. They are not interested in real on-ground solutions. Instead, they hide behind bureaucratic processes, content with superficial gestures and symbolic posturing, while the real needs of Aboriginal communities are left by the wayside, in the dirt as it were. Honourable Members, we must ask ourselves, how can the Greens and the woke left, with all their talk of compassion and justice, continue to push policies that disempower traditional owners and confuse the entire process of who speaks for the land? The answer is simple. They don't care about results. They care about maintaining their grip on power and appearing progressive. 
even if it means tearing down the structures that have allowed Aboriginal communities to manage their own land and heritage. We have had representations in our office with several Aboriginal land councils who would come to us to express their frustration at not being able to do any development on their own lands to benefit their people through housing projects or by, ex by exploiting their lands as anyone else can and would do in New South Wales. All the Greens and woke left want is for all the land to be indigenously protected areas, private reserves that provide few if any jobs and absolutely no social housing. They deprive the very people they say they are defending, uh, defending from, from extraditing, uh, extricating themselves from intergenerational social and economic quagmire and prefer to sentence to them a life of, re of reliance on social welfare and government handouts rather than engaging in fruitful ways in the New South Wales economy. We cannot allow New South Wales to fall into the same socialist trap experienced by Cuba or Venezuela where government overreach stifles innovation, prosperity and, yes, even cultural heritage. The Greens and their allies on the left would have us believe that more regulation, more government control and more so-called consultation with bureaucrats will somehow save the environment and protect Aboriginal heritage. But the reality is that their vision would bring New South Wales to its knees. If we want to protect Aboriginal culture and heritage, we need to listen to the real mm. traditional owners, not the bureaucrats empowered by the broken system. We need to ensure that consultation is genuine and that, that it reflects the voices of those with the deepest connection to the land. We need to stand against the socialist agenda of the Greens and their woke allies who would turn this state into a socialist wasteland. Aboriginal people deserve better. All the people of New South Wales deserve better. We cannot allow the confusion by woke leftists to continue eroding our decision-making processes and cultural integrity. We've had enough of this green dalliance in the social chicanery. It is time to, for them to admit and stand up for what they really are, the New South Wales Communist Party, and stop pretending to oppose this and other minds on the basis of environment and cultural impact. They are trying to impose it to limit jobs, limit capitalism, and all the benefits it will bring to the people, uh, be they indigenous or non-indigenous, in the Blaney, Bathurst, Orridge area or elsewhere in this state. It's just a plain disgrace and it needs to be called out.